Hi, how are you doing today? Very good. I've just arrived in Los Angeles. So I'm enjoying the light. Oh, amazing. And the sunshine, I gather. Yeah, yeah amazing. Um, congratulations on such an incredible uh, series and incredible character. I wonder if we could start talking about what drew you to the role and the world of Star Wars. Well, what always draws you to the world, world is if you're asked to be in it. I was so <laughs> delighted when Tony Kira rang me up. They said, when you take a call from him on Zoom, this man appeared on my screen and started talking about his series. I, was, I said, I'm lost, I'm yours forever. So I was very happy to be asked. And I, I, you, know, you so trust Tony's writing that you're not having to question whether you're going to like it. You know you will. And uh, Rogue One was such a success and such a textured success. But I feel in this, he's almost surpassed himself again because it's it's so domestic so real so laid down what it is that he's trying to explore and investigate so i was thrilled to be part of it yeah absolutely you do bring up an interesting um question because we always keep coming back to star wars because it feels so present in our times of uprising and colonization and these empires we're fighting against is that why we come back to the the series and the shows and the film i think all future writing is about a reflection of an exploration of the present. It's very hard to look at the present when you're in the present because we're all just dealing with things shifting under our feet all the time. But the future allows you just enough distance to sort of see it. It's like looking backwards, except you're looking forwards. And you can see it more clearly maybe if you look at it through another lens. And that's what the future is. It's, it's the other lens, isn't it? To show us who we are. It, otherwise, who knows the future, we might not understand it at all, but we do understand this because we humans are the same, no matter where we are. It's the same complicated feelings. It's the same powerlessness against uh, powers that we, you know, have forces that we can't rise up against or we have to rise up against or we don't understand economics that we're not, you know, in any way govern, go, governors of. Um, God, we know that in Britain at the moment, no end, you know. so. All, all these shows reflect something about ourselves, but the more successfully successful they are, I think they do it because they emotionally get hold of the fact that we are always um, trying to be stable emotionally in an unstable world. Absolutely. It's so beautifully put. Um, and I find your, your character fascinating because you get to play two different versions of her, both like an adventurous kind of rogue and then like a reclusive later. How is it playing these two different versions? Well, for me, I was playing a much older woman and a much younger woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he cast me somewhere in the middle so you know she she's very old when we meet her and uh that was hours of pathetics and um you know maybe not enough hours you might say <laughs> um he said it was hours of pathetics but also trying to settle into somebody being in, near the end of their lives and working out exactly what the values that they had not had to think about much earlier on in their life they were and then this younger version of marva of how she came about, how she found Cassian, and how she, you know, rather beautifully saved him, loved him, brought him up. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. You're an absolute icon in this household. So thank you so much. Thank Take you care much. and enjoy the rest of your Thanks, day. Sarah. You too. Bye bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.